Today we're taking another look at an advent of view coding challenge. Throughout December there's a bunch of different coding challenges, one per day, and they test various development skills related to view. This one is mostly focused on conditionals. So let's go ahead and take a look at the final application and then start building out our own solution. Here is the final application. It is fairly simple. It shows you a joke, which is fetched from an API. If I go ahead and hit tell me, it's going to show me the answer. We can then hit another and repeat the process over and over again. Uh, and again, the main focus here is going to be conditionals and making sure we're using everything in a readable and maintainable fashion. Let's go ahead now and get started. I am starting off with this very blank, simple template. As always, when I'm working with an API, I like to get an idea of what data I'm working with. So I'm going to go ahead and just write a function to fetch the data and, and see what we have. I'm going to call this one fetch joke as you do. I like all my fetch functions to be called fetch something just to make it clear what is going on. Going to go ahead and assign that to a variable and we're then going to go ahead and pass that one to JSON as you always need to do when you're using something like fetch. It's going to say await res.json. Finally, let's go ahead and do a console log just to get an idea of what we're working with. If we go ahead and make sure we actually call the function correctly, we should be able to see a response and there we go. There is a bunch of different properties. Uh, the ones we're primarily interested in for this particular challenge is going to be two. We're going to be looking at setup, which is the initial joke, and we're going to be looking at delivery, which is going to be the answer. I like to keep everything nice and type safe, so let's just go ahead and define a nice quick interface to, to give us that guidance. We're going to have both setup and delivery, which are strings, and that's all we're going to need. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and render the setup, which is going to be the joke. We need some way to save this data, so let's go ahead and create a new ref. I'm just going to call this one joke, which is going to be a ref, and the type of course is going to be a joke. I am initializing this without, an, without a value, so it's actually going to become either an undefined or a joke, because this, of course, can be undefined when the application is first loaded. For this reason, we are going to need a conditional down here as well. So let's go ahead and start off with a vf. We're going to see if joke is defined, and if it is, we're going to go ahead and render the, the, the setup. So we're going to jump inside of here and just go ahead and say joke.setup. Finally, we need to assign this variable. We're currently creating the variable, but we're not assigning it. We could do it in a number of places. For example, we could do it right down here inside of fetch, but I do like these functions to stay separate and I only have one responsibility. The fetch joke function is just going to fetch data. It's not going to do any updating of interfaces or anything like that. So what instead I'm going to do is create a new function. First, I'm going to say return JSON as joke, just to make sure we get that type completion. Then we're going to create another function here called get joke. This one is going to wrap my fetch joke function and then update my, my ref. So we're going to start off first by saying const, uh, let's just say data is equal to await fetch joke. Then we're going to go ahead and update joke.value is equal to data. Finally, we're going to change this one to be called get joke instead of fetch joke. We save this off, we should hopefully see something rendered. And so we do, we have this set up. Why did Sanders helper need to see the doctor? I have no idea. I have no doubt it's going to be a fairly dry answer <laughs> when we're about to find out. The next thing we need to do is create our button to actually show us the answer. So let's go ahead and conditionally create a button down here. When we click on this, we're just going to call a function. Uh, we need some way to toggle whether we're showing the answer or not. So let's go ahead and create a new variable. I'm just going to call it show and we are going to initialize that one to false. We have a few different options for updating this. We could go ahead and just say show is equal to true or false inside of here. Uh, I really prefer not to do that. I like to keep my templates fairly simple and just call functions. So instead what I'm going to do is have one called handle show and that's going to update that variable. Let's go ahead now and create a new function called handle show which is going to do exactly what you'd expect. Show.value is now going to become true. I do like this style of coding. We have a bunch of different functions all having one very clear separate responsibility. And our template is nice and simple without any conditionals or, or at least without any too much complex logic. Uh, we are going to have a label here called tell me. And if everything goes according to plan, clicking on this is going to update that value. And we can go ahead and show the answer. We're going to go ahead and do that as well. So I'm going to create a new div with another conditional, uh, which we're going to be very conscious of these conditionals. We may like to come back and refactor this in a moment. Uh, but for now, let's just get something working. Uh, if show is true, we're going to go ahead and show the answer. So we're going to show joke.delivery. Let's go ahead now and give this one a try. Uh, I would like my button to be at the bottom, so I'm going to move that down there. If we go ahead now and say tell me, we're going to find out the answer here, which is exactly what we were expecting. Uh, everything is working correctly. And the next thing we need to do is conditionally change this button to show something different. If we have a look at the example over here, it says another. 
and we have a few different options here. We could use a single button with a conditional, but we need to have two conditionals then. We'd have a button with a conditional text, and then we also have a conditional function which changes depending on whether we're showing the joke or not. I don't think this is very ideal. What is much better to me is having a separate button. Again, we want our functions to have one single responsibility. And we have the same thing with our UI elements here. Each button only needs to do one thing. Let's go ahead now and put the other button here. It is going to be another. And this one is going to show another joke. So I'm going to say handle another. Let's go ahead and just stub this function out for now and make sure everything is correctly rendered. If we go ahead and save this off, uh, this is not going to be correct. We have two buttons here. Uh, they obviously don't look like buttons. They haven't been styled, but that's just fine for now. We need to make sure we're rendering the correct button as well in here. So let's go ahead and have another conditional. I'm going to start off with VF and we're going to say if VF is equal to show, uh, it should be the other way around. It should be not show. We're going to show tell me. Otherwise, we're going to use V else. Again, this is getting quite messy with all these conditionals. We are going to fix this up in just a moment. Uh, but for now, this is working correctly. Since we're not showing the joke, uh, or we're not showing the delivery, we're then going to show the tell me button. Otherwise, we're going to show handle another. And this is going to be working just fine. There is a few more small improvements I'd like to make here before we finish off the application. Firstly, when I have my conditionals, I don't like to have a negative statement here. It's saying V if not show, which is kind of confusing to me. What I would much rather have is the positive here, so V if show, and then we'd have the V else down here. So we're going to go ahead and change this around. I want this to be the conditional saying V if show, and this is going to be the opposite V else. Let's just go ahead and make sure that's still working. Then we're going to finish off the application. We save this one off. Hopefully it's going to be correct still. Uh, yes, it says tell me, and then it says another. So this is working correctly. And I find this to be much more readable without the, the not show in the statement here. Uh, the final thing we need to do is go ahead and fetch another joke inside of here. <laughs> that's what we're going to do. First thing we're going to do is clear the joke out. We're going to get rid of the old one, making it undefined. We're then going to go ahead and fetch a new joke. So I'm going to say show. Or oh, firstly, we're going to say show.value is false. We don't want to show the, the delivery once we fetch a new joke. Then we're going to go ahead and say get joke. Let's go ahead and give this one a try. So we have our joke. We have tell me. We have the answer. And another is going to fetch another joke. Yeah, we're correctly not showing the, the punchline until we click tell me. And now we are. So everything is now working correctly. There is one final improvement we can make here to do with our conditionals. You can see we have the same check here and here. So what we can do is wrap this in a single conditional to not have to do multiple checks here. Let's go ahead now and create a new template. And this is going to be my root conditional. I'm going to say v if is equal to show and just move both of these inside. Finally, now that we've done that, we can eliminate our double conditional. Just go ahead and delete these two. And this is going to be a whole lot more readable. And this also does represent our system as you would expect. There's only really two states in this system. You're either not seeing the joke or you are seeing the joke. And this is represented here. We have the V if and the V else uh, representing both states of the system. And everything is working correctly at this point in time. Uh, finally, I'm surprised to see this is not actually getting used. I think I've missed something. Let's see if another is still working. Uh, it's not. What we need to do is make sure we're calling the correct function here. We need to say at click equals to handle another. And that is going to finally fix up our system. Let's go ahead and make sure it's working one more time and everything is working correctly. So I am pretty happy with this solution. We can see a number of really nice things here. All our functions are very simple and focused. One fetches, one updates the interface, one updates a variable, and one refetches everything. Uh, it's very clear what is going on. And each one of these is very clear where it is related to in our interface. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this solution. It is nice and clean. Uh, there's probably many other ways to solve this one as well. Definitely interested in other solutions. So if you have one, please go ahead and share it with me. I think this is enough for now, and I'll see you in the next video.